So we already talked about skills, right? Evangelism, discipleship, and then what's the third? Hunting small groups, right? Now we need to add two other basic skills uh, that would be, uh, I believe, important. No? So uh, first is uh, we need to add one step closer missions. This is skill. What is the scenario here? Have you seen a person that is blind and somebody helping that blind person? Leading, you know, somebody leading the blind? What would the leader do? One step at a time, right? Yes. I have not seen yet a guy leading a blind, running the blind around. <laughs> that would be very funny, but it's always one step at a time. So in the same way, people who do not know the Lord are spiritually blind. And so as believers, what can we do? We can actually help them one step closer to salvation in Jesus. One step at a time. Okay? So in other words, even though they are not open to the gospel, we can create situations where they can be, we can bring them closer to salvation in Jesus Christ. Okay, now, I would like us to look at this gray matrix. Well, the gray matrix, there is the vertical component, there is the horizontal. What is the vertical component? <coughs> no knowledge of the gospel and able to teach others, meaning it's about knowledge. No knowledge yet, they, have, they, have, they know nothing about the gospel, but here, know a lot of things about the gospel, so they're able to teach. The horizontal is the attitude. Here, antagonistic meaning negative. Here, enthusiastic meaning positive. So people in your network, where you live, where you work, where you study, are in different parts of the matrix. But our goal is to bring them here. Meaning they, they know a lot about the gospel and they are positive towards Christianity. Because the likelihood when they are here is that they will easily make a commitment to Christ. Are you following? Yes. So here, no knowledge of the gospel and very negative to Christianity. If you go and share the gospel with them, they will be <coughs> very negative. So they are not responsive. And it will be difficult because no knowledge. So you have to teach a lot. But every time we engage with them, we can help them to have more knowledge and every time we engage with them, we can help them to become more positive towards Christianity. So eventually, they will be in this part of the matrix. We bring them here, and then we bring them there. So eventually, they will be here. So, because if that's the case, then easily, we can win them to Christ. However, if they are there, it may take so much time. No? More knowledge, more knowledge, more knowledge. The negative, bring them, make them positive, positive, positive. And then you bring them here. There are also cases that it can be very fast. Like in Qatar, remember? The Qatari who got sick. So very negative to Christianity at first. But when he was healed, oh, become very positive. There is something special with Christians. And then uh, what happened? How about knowledge of the gospel? Tell me more, tell me more. So, fast track. You know? So, in a short span of time, very positive to Christianity, and now more knowledge of the gospel. So, committing to Christ would be easier. However, in a regular case, positive, you know, knowledge, positive, so it will take some time. But all of this, we need to remember before they make a commitment to Christ, this all is necessary in the process. Especially if they are like uh, a little bit negative or negative and no knowledge of the gospel. So what do we do? If there are people like that, now where we are doing ministry, so we just need to uh, uh, make sure that we can bring them no, uh, to, to the Lord. So what do we do? First, think of a friend or a family member who needs Christ. You can start here. Or if you are there in the mission field, then somebody in the community, maybe whom you have met. 
and then place that person on the matrix. Is that person negative to Christianity? How about knowledge of the gospel? And then thirdly, is that person close to hearing the gospel? Or maybe open? So you, you will have to assess where they are. Does that person know a lot about the gospel or a little? So once you are able to assess where they are, then you can bring them one step closer. We look at some examples. Okay? Now, uh, oops. Example. Like, if you are in, in your office working, lunch break, in the cafeteria or in the church, uh, I mean in the office, uh, what do you call this? Uh, coffee shop or whatever, or restaurant in the office. Lunch time. So what do you do? Sit down. And then you pray, right? Thank God before you eat. Oftentimes what Christians do is, then they, that actually they already pray. <laughs> but here they said, make it visible that you pray. So don't make it loud uh, for everybody to hear, but make it visible because you don't have to really be allowed to, to be seen. So maybe bow your head and just move a bit your lips so just they, oh, you're, you're saying something. And then maybe somebody sitting next to you say, You prayed? Or what did you do? So you say, Well, I prayed. I'm a Christian and we are we as Christians we are just great I uh, know yeah grateful to God for his faithfulness in providing everything that we need. So I just took time to just thank God for faithfully providing. You know, sometimes for us that's really not not so important. Uh, maybe we have not really seen the, the importance of that, except that we pray and thank God. But for non-believers, uh, sometimes the effect is that they become positive towards Christians. Oh, Christians, I really like them. They are very grateful. They, 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 they used to appreciate and thank, thank uh, you know, people for annoying. And they thank God for providing their needs. So they become positive. Okay? And then, maybe with not much knowledge of, of the gospel, so you say, well, I'm praying because I believe God owns everything. So maybe you can share a little here already. What, you know, so I believe, uh, we believe as Christians that God created everything. He owns everything and whatever we have. Actually, it's all from Him. So I'm just thankful to God for providing everything. And so I just thank God for the food. So not, no knowledge of, of the gospel? Now you're saying this God is loving, this God is faithful, this God is our provider. So you're giving knowledge. So the point here is every time you, you engage with them, you are like helping them become more positive towards Christianity. You're, you're giving them more knowledge. So it's like giving them a piece of a puzzle. You know when you, you make a puzzle, one piece, nothing. This is really nothing. It's worth nothing. But when you begin to put the pieces together, you begin to appreciate the picture. That's the same thing. Every time we engage with them, they become more positive to Christianity. They have more knowledge of the gospel. Eventually, they will appreciate you know, the, the offer of eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what we mean by one step closer. So one thing can be done is when you have meals. Or some, they, what they do, they bring their Bibles in their office. They read it during break time, not, not during office hours. And uh, one guy was saying, his boss asked, ah, is that a Bible? Yeah, I saw it's a Bible. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. And the uh, employee said, yes, sir. I'm a Christian, so I'm reading my Bible every day. And, you know, free time here, I read it because it helps me to be a more loving father, a more loving uh, husband, a more responsible parent, you know, and, of course, uh, become a more responsible employee. Uh, so the boss said, oh, I like Christians because they have better work attitude. But anyway, uh, God will give you wisdom if you're just aware of this. And you just pray, God, I'm starting work today. Lord, help me to bring people here in my network where I work one step closer to you. God will just open doors. Uh, I know of one. Uh, he wants to share the gospel to a Muslim in Mindanao, a Maranao. Sailing Malong. You know Malong? Yes. The, the Sarong? Uh, 
I don't know uh, what do you call that in. It's a cloth like they they wrap around. Uh, Uh -huh, something like that, okay. Yeah. So, this guy uh, wants to share to the one who's selling. And so, he, he was praying, God, how can I do that? If I go there and buy, then that ends it. So, she thought, oh, he thought then, maybe I'll just go and ask if I can just pay, you know, like, small, yeah, uh, up, you know, for, for like several weeks like that, and then, just a portion I paid. So installment. So he asked, how much is the malong? Oh, it's 300 pesos. Okay. Uh, can, can I get it and on installment basis? And uh, the Muslim said, so how long will you pay? And he said, can I pay it for six months? <laughs> and oh, I mean, business people, they said, no problem. So instead of 300, six months, it's six months. So 600. So you pay me 100 a month. I mean, you cannot double your money in six months. Even in the bank, right? That, that's 300. It becomes 600 in six months. So he said, okay, okay, good. Every month I'll pay you 100. <laughs> so that gives him the right to go and visit. Once they close their missions. That is, that's his strategy. So after one week, not even one month, after one week, I have 25 pesos, so I came. I want to pay because, you know, I don't want to, to miss, you know, I, I don't, you know, I promise and then I will miss it. I don't like that. I want to fulfill my promise. And so the, the Muslim uh, vendor said, I really like these Christians because they really pay, you know, and they really do what they say. But, you know, every time we'll go, it's not just paying. Oh, by the way, how are you? How's the business? You know, and then talk about things and begin talking about the gospel. Just a portion. Just like giving a piece of the parcel. And then sometimes, even in, be, in between the week, he will pass by. Oh, by the way, I, I was able to buy fried banana. So I bought for me, but I thought I'm passing anyway, so I'll buy for you. So I came. So yeah, we can eat together. So you eat. eat. How's life? How's business? Uh, and then the, the most important, I really like this case. They pay their, you know, uh, they, 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 they pay if they have uh, to pay something. They pay not just on time, but really ahead of time. And they really fulfill what they said. And also giving me some free food also. Snacks. Anyway, before six months, the Muslim prayed to receive Christ. One step closer. Not, this will not work in all cases. No? Uh, for us. But there will be creative ways that God will give you. If only you are conscious of this. That people who do not know the Lord are spiritually blind. And you can bring them to the Lord one step closer at a time. Every time you engage with them. So, how that will happen? Ask the Lord. Because uh, the books cannot enumerate the steps. Because God works differently with different people. What is important is God can create situations where you can bring them one step closer to the Lord. So only two things. What's the goal here? Do something or say something that they become positive. Remember? Remember the matrix? They become positive, right? And, and uh, let, let, let's go back, go back to that. And the more positive they are, the likelihood of making a commitment to Christ. Knowledge, of course, is very important also. So what do you do every time you engage with them? Not just they will be positive to Christianity, but <coughs> there is knowledge of the gospel. No? So sometimes maybe you, you just say, I, I, I want to pay. And then, by the way, I read in the newspaper, there was a family that was killed. All of them were killed and they were robbed. So using that, what can you talk about? Well, this is not just in that newspaper. I also heard... So on, on television and in, you know, and it's happening not just in the Philippines, but it's happening in different parts of the world. And this is actually what the Bible calls sin, no? Because sin has, uh, you know. So just talk a little, okay? Anyway, thanks, and then you know. So just give them a piece of the puzzle, so it would not be very obvious that you are sharing the gospel. 
Well, just one piece. Let, let them, let, let, let them uh, understand that. And then eventually, they will be ready. Okay? So, God works in different ways. So, just uh, make sure that you have that skill added. Okay? So, one step closer missions. Now, uh, I would like us to look at the second, uh, another skill that... Uh, 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 yeah, but, but before that, let, let me work on this. Uh, because sometimes there are people we thought that are really not open to the gospel. But actually, many of them, many of them are actually ready for the gospel. So, here. Now, what are ordinary people or extraordinary people? Ordinary people are those who take a long time to pay their trust in Jesus. While extraordinary people, hearts are prepared and they are ready to believe and follow Jesus. So there are people in our network where, you know, uh, there, that, there are people that are ready, that there are people that are not ready. So don't force the issue on those that are not ready because there are people that are already ready. Example, uh, we have a lot of ex examples in scriptures. The tax collector in Matthew 19, no? One person, just one engagement with Jesus, what happened? Huh? Follow Jesus immediately. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, Luke 19. <clears throat> so Zacchaeus, the tax collector, Luke 19, follow Jesus immediately, one time. I have a pastor friend in Pampanga. He was telling me, one pastor preached. Uh, this passage, and he said, Zacharias, come down. <laughs> and one of the leaders in front said, It's Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, Pastor, not Zacharias. <laughs> and he said, Zacharias, come down. You are not supposed to be there. Zacchaeus is supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so... <laughs> Zacchaeus, one, one engagement and followed Christ. The Samaritan woman, one engagement with Jesus, followed Jesus immediately. The demon possessed man, Mark chapter 5, one engagement, followed Jesus. Lydia of Thyatira, Acts chapter 16, followed Jesus immediately. The Philippian jailer, you know, Acts 16, you know, the Apostle Paul, uh, remember the uh, um, Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved in your family. So this is the situation here. That's the context. The jailer followed Jesus immediately in just one engagement. The Ethiopian eunuch, Acts chapter 8, Philip, right? Yes. Yeah. So many others in scriptures. So in scriptures alone, we can see that there are people that are ready for the gospel. They are right for the gospel. But sometimes we insist on those that are not ready. So we pray, God, as I start work here, or as I, you know, do this, say that, where are the people? Lead me to the people that are already ready for the gospel. I remember the story of the mango boy. Oh, oh I love mangoes. So they have har harvested a lot of mangoes in their farm. They enjoy it together as a family. But this time, they have so much harvest. That the father said, we have, it's, there's no way for us to be able to finish all of this. So, told his son, go to the village, you know, from, from their farm, go there and then sell mangoes. He was there the whole day and no mango was sold. So, going back to their farm, he was riding in a small bus, a mini bus. And you know the minibus uh, was full of people, and so all he can sit is at the back of the driver. <clears throat> he was just uh, sitting at the back of the driver and facing the passengers, and then he was staring at the mangoes that was not sold. And while he was staring, he remembered how sweet the mangoes are, and so he thought, "Oh, I'll just begin eating mang maybe some of these mangoes." <laughs> so he began eating. And then one of the lady passengers said, Are you selling your mangoes? And he said, Yes, ma'am. And then how much is this? 
So he said the price and he said, give me a kilo. Another passenger said, I also want to buy. Give me and then let me buy also. In short, all the mangoes that was not sold in the village was sold all in the bus. Why? Because they have seen the boy enjoy the mangoes. No? So, as people look at us, can they see Jesus in us? Can they see Jesus in us? Can we tell them, taste and see that the Lord is good? So, what's another skill? One step closer missions. You know how to share the gospel. You need. You know how to make disciples. You know how to handle a small group. Now you need. You need to be able to uh, do the the one step closer missions. So every time you engage with people, try that, and then you will be surprised how God will open doors. Another skill that you need to uh, add is company three discipleship, and this is uh, where we will be using this little bookmark. So that uh, you would be able to use this uh, to handle a small group. No? So how do you make disciples? This will also tell you. So actually, uh, whether it's one-to-one -one or a small group, you can employ the same thing. So it doesn't have to be different. It doesn't have to be complicated. So that it's simpler. And this can work with same culture. <clears throat> and this can work with a cross-cultural situation. So we don't need another material for same culture and another material for a cross-cultural setting. Just one material, whatever culture, we can use it. A small group, two people, one-on-one, -on -one, or bigger group, we can use the same thing. Simpler, easier. So no, compl not, 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 uh, no need to be complicated. So we will be teaching you simple ways so that in the mission field, you can teach. Even uneducated can actually do it. Because if it's complicated, only those who have gone to school can do it. But the mandate in the Great Commission is for every believer. Even though they are uneducated, they have to make disciples. So we make it simple so that they have something to use. They can do something. Okay? So, company three, discipleship. Second Timothy, we already talked about this, commit to faithful, reliable men. Okay, we have already talked about making disciples here. Uh, and I've, I've shared already about all of these stories, just to remind you actually that uh, it's very critical to understand all of this uh, in the light of handling a small group. No? So, what is important here? is the obey. Earlier we say, go and make disciples. So we make disciples. And then what's the focus? All nations. And then now the obedience-based discipleship. In other words, when we make disciples, our focus will not just be knowledge, but obedience. Because even if they know a lot, and they are not obedient, nothing will happen. In fact, that's the problem why we have a lot of church splits, competition in the church. Because many people are so knowledgeable, they know a lot of things, and the only pro the, the problem is they are not obedient. So they know a lot, but not obedient. So it's, it's very important that they know a lot, but they put it into practice. So obedience based. The little that they know, they practice it. The little that they know, they practice it. So they will not compete. Okay? So what is a company to discipleship? It's made up of two or three people gathered in Jesus' name. Two or three. It doesn't need to be 12. No? Uh, there's a movement now called G12. So you need to be having 12 people to be involved in that. There is what they call Pito Pito. No? So there are three people, uh, seven people. For us, it's only three, company three. So simpler because it's the group is smaller. No, you the bigger the group, you need more time because more people will be sharing. Three people, easier, shorter time to meet. And then open times, big group. Some people are not open because many will hear, but two or three, 
then they can be open because it's just a small group. So a lot of advantages actually when you are doing it in a small group. Now, uh, is this biblical? Yes, because the Jesus promised us we gather two or three, he will be with us. So what will be the agenda or what will be part of uh, the discussion here? Three-part agenda. First, sharing about our personal lives. Maybe we can begin distributing this, just this one. One each. And then, uh, yeah, share about our personal lives. So what I did as I, I, yeah, isa isa. You, we have enough, no? Oh, it's okay. Okay. So mine, what I did was I, I printed it in a uh, yellow paper. Uh, some people they laminate it, no? Uh, but anyway, uh, we, you know, you can get from Eloisa the the original copy, so you can actually make one. But this is a very simple tool that you can use. No? The, 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 the way it's being done in the passages of scriptures were, are basically the ones they use in, in those movements that we were talking about. So three-part agenda, sharing about our personal lives. Let's go to that company three. Okay? Sharing our personal lives. What do we do? Share with each other. So what are you thankful for? What are your concerns, struggles, and challenges? Be honest, vulnerable, uh, and keep all that is shared confidential. So what do you do first? When you gather, you talk about this, share about your lives. Now, in the context of office, what do you do? So you can eat together lunch. And then while you eat lunch, say, what are you thankful for? And then share, and then keep eating. About 15 minutes, you may be done eating and sharing. And then keep your food. Hearing from God. So that's the second, hearing insights from the Word. Learn by heart one of the passages listed at the back. You have to go this, go to this by sequence. That's the best. Okay? Because it's logically arranged. And then what are you supposed to do? Answer the questions together. What does the story tell us about God? <laughs> what does the story tell us about people? What does it tell us we ought to do? What am I going to tell what I have learned? So that would be the four questions. Okay? So you can easily remember the four questions. And you will have to use the same four questions in all the passages. And then, pray for each other and those who need Jesus. So conversation with God. Pray for each other's needs. Remember in the uh, sharing time in the beginning, <coughs> you talk about concerns, struggles, and challenges. So pray for each other. Okay? Now, pray for others who need to know Jesus. Uh, <coughs> and pray for opportunities <coughs> to bring them one step closer to him. Remember the one step closer scale? Okay? And then pray that you can start a company group with them. And then pray simple, short, simple prayers. Take turns praying, sentence prayers. Depending on the setting, you can pray with your eyes open. Just talk to God um, honestly and lovingly to God. So, even in the prayers, it's just simple. No? And again, don't close your eyes if uh, it's not safe to close your eyes. Because it would be very obvious. If you're in restricted countries, you cannot close your eyes because it would be obvious you're praying. But you can just open your eyes and just, Lord, we are so grateful that we can, we can meet and share. and Especially say it in Tagalog or your own language would be better. Okay? So... In, in the Middle East or in the second countries, they do this. They pray. Even the police will, will, will be there. No problem. Two, three people. No, don't, don't make it loud. Just open your eyes and they talk. They are, you are just talking. No? Sharing with one another. Somebody asked the question, is it biblical to pray with eyes open? <laughs> well, there's a passage in scriptures which says, watch and pray. 
<laughs> anyway, so, so I believe it's just okay because really it's the attitude of the heart, you know. It's the attitude of the heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you need to know how to use this. So, at the back are 30 passages from creation to Christ. And these are links logically so that even though they don't have understanding of God, no concept of God, they will begin to appreciate what we will be talking about. Okay, so Genesis 1. What is Genesis 1? That's creation, right? So if you answer the first question, uh, you answer the first question, what does the story tell us about God? So you will be able to see, based on Genesis 1, that even before everything else, there is someone who existed, which is God. And this God is powerful, he's almighty, because he created everything by his powerful word. It's, in Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did he create the world? Huh? By his powerful word. Let there be light, and it came to pass. So what is the story telling us about God? You dig, you, you read. What is the story telling us about God? So go, to, go through the passage. You know, I did this in, in Japan to uh, the pastors there, those Filipinas, married to Japanese. And of course, most of them are, have not been trained in seminary. And what they were telling me is that, wow, we have not seen this before when we read Genesis. Because, you know, when you read it, you have so much in mind. But this time, you just focus on what is the story telling us about God. So you just focus. So they, they were just amazed. They said, wow, this is the great, the, the great and awesome God that we serve. This is the God who loves us. This is, so it became so meaningful to them. Now, for us Christians, this is a very common story. Sometimes it has no more meaning. But this is what they discovered. For Muslims, for Buddhists, for atheists, for animists, you know, tribalists, those unreligious people, they were surprised that, that uh, when they hear the story, you know, it creates so much interest in them that they cannot help but teach, tell them to others. Why, why 80,000 churches? Why 4 million believers? Because when they heard the story, who are the person that you will tell, tell what you have learned? I said, oh, this is a good story. I will tell this to my children, the mother would say. Or I will tell this to my husband or my daughter or my son. Or I will tell this to my brother or my parents. So they tell the story. After they hear it, they will tell it to others. And those others, when they hear it, they will tell it to others. And because it's simple, it can just go from generation to generation. So we will try to learn the skill after lunch how to work on this. So that we'll be able to see how we can multiply disciples. Again, one-on-one. -on -one, or company tree, or a big group, you can use the same questions. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, what does the story tell us about God? God created everything. You can work on that. Next question. What does the story tell us about man? Genesis chapter 1. Never mentioned yet about man. So, when God created, when God existed, man was not existing then. Right? So, that's another realization for, uh, especially from other religion. They said, oh, so we are not from, you know, I, I mean, we, we, uh, we, we, are, we have not existed. God existed first. Anyway, the, what is interesting is when you go to chapter 2. What does the story tell us about God? So now even a Buddhist, a Hindu, or an, an, a, a non-believer there, an, 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 uh, you know, a tribalist, an animist would say, hey, the, it, it says in chapter 2 in the story, what does the story tell us about God? This God who created the world, who existed before everything began, is the same God who created man. So, we are not from apes. We are not from monkeys. We are not from animals. We are God's creation. The, the Hindu or the Buddhist will say, oh, it's not, we are not the result of reincarnation. But we are a creation of God. So we are now addressing even those with different worldview. 
So this is the good thing here. So now a Buddhist or a Hindu will say, oh, I'm, I'm God's creation, I'm not a product of reincarnation. And this God who created everything also created me. So what does this story tell us about man? No? So they would better appreciate who they are, that we are a God's creation. So that would be part of the discussion. And so when, and you, when it, you go to the third question, uh, so what should I do? No? How do... Uh, uh, well, what, what do they do? They said, well, I would rather believe that I'm a creation. And uh, I would rather believe that uh, there's a creator God today. And then who are you going to share what you have learned? Then, oh, I, I already said about last week. So I will share this again because this is like the continuation of, of last week's story. So it, it builds up. The story builds up. And even the interest builds up. Now you go to chapter 3. No, because it says in Genesis chapter 3. But you notice after Genesis 3, you go to chapter 6 and chapter 12. No, 4 and 5. But chapter 3, what's that? Uh, it's the fall of man, right? So what does the story tell us about God? Well, this God who created man made a command, gave a command. Okay, you can eat everything except this. What does the story tell us about man? Man disobeyed God. Though what do we ought to do? We need to ask God for forgiveness. We need to be reconciled with God. So sometimes in the, uh, at this point they will say, how can we do that? That's why you need to learn how to share the gospel. Because from here you will say, well, this is what the Bible calls sin, disobedience. And, and then, you know, you can, you can now uh, tell them that because of this we are separated from God. But God, because of His great love for us, sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place. So when we, re we ask God for forgiveness, we receive Christ into our heart, life as Savior and Lord, then we can be reconciled back to God. So you can, you can talk about the gospel. And uh, we have seen, even <coughs> they are from other religious background, when they come to chapter 3, some of them will also already make a commitment to Christ. Others, succeeding stories, but it's okay. Root, uh, root, uh, fruit doesn't ripen at the same time. You have, we have mango tree outside, but not ma every ma uh, not. Uh, on Monday, every, every fruit will be, ripe, ri will be ripe. Tomorrow, maybe others, next. Uh, okay? So, fruit doesn't ripen at the same time. So, this is very interesting. <laughs>